I wrote Speaking Rights to Power as a kind of capstone after 25 years of working on the politics of human rights and I became fascinated by the question of how social movements and human rights campaigns can be more effective and the role that information politics and communication politics plays in the effectiveness and the impact of human rights campaigns. I began to see that there was a communication structure to human rights rhetoric. The elements of all political communication are a voice, a message, a performance of that message in public space or public consciousness, the use of some form of media to transmit the message, and an audience that is both the target, uh, the intended target, and the actual recipient of the message. So I examine in the book um, 26 campaigns, some successful and others less so, across all world regions and over a span from the 19th to the 21st century to try and derive some of the principles and some of the best practices that govern those elements of communication. An example of this is the importance of charismatic voice and one of the things uh, that I look at for example is the selection of Nelson Mandela as a symbolic leader of the anti-apartheid campaign because he embodies certain qualities, he encourages international identification. I have a series of recommendations that I have tried to tailor to the needs of advocates and policymakers who are sympathetic to um, make communication and advocacy more effective. So within those elements, what I would recommend is first of all that you personify, humanize, rehumanize, recover the dignity of individuals who are victims of a struggle, particularly if the source of oppression is chronic. Second of all, um, look for an appropriate and resonant frame and be sure to include in your message a sense of connection between the intended audience and the abuse that you're depicting and a concrete set of solutions or recommendations contained within your message. Because if you simply continually expose the depth of abuse without offering a solution, that can be dispiriting and alienating for an audience. It's important also to search for appropriate media that can deliver the proper combination of diffusion and interactivity for your audience and uh, not to be attached to any particular form of media, just be strategic in your use of media. And finally, it's important to think about a targeted audience and to think about bridging narratives that will connect you with the experience of that audience, with their identity, and that may include their own human rights history. So I think that those are principles upon which we can build and construct cosmopolitan coalitions for the promotion of human rights worldwide.